Why did Rotten Tomatoes give this a 41%? Hi, guys. <laughs> hey, Grace. Yeah. Have David? you ever seen such a beautiful night? Have you ever seen such a beautiful night? I could almost kiss the stars for shining so bright. Guys, this movie turned 17. We made a post about it, and most people agree that that just makes all of us feel old. Because we all remember seeing it in theaters, right? Oh my God, I absolutely, like sometimes I'm like, am I older than 17? Oh, that means, yeah, I'm older than 17. Good thing we're only a year above. Above 17. that, yeah. So. <laughs> Fresh 18s. Oh, but literally the fact that this movie 17 blows my mind. And you all know how we feel about Lizzie McGuire and Hilary Duff in general. This is crazy though. Why did we have we, we probably talked about this? Why did Rotten Tomatoes give this a 41 percent? Excuse me, mom. Oh no, yeah, did you know that? Did you, did you know that the Lizzie McGuire movie had a 41 percent on Rotten Tomatoes? Oh no, he's calling his mom. This isn't good. Yeah, I, I, I'm filming a video with Grace right now, and I just don't know if like. Should we keep going or like why? I don't know why they would do that. Like, how come you never told me? You, you dropped me off at the movie theater to see this 17 years ago and you never. Okay, call me back. Oh, she didn't pick up. <laughs> <laughs> the pauses really made it seem like she picked up the phone. Okay, but no, let's get back into that. 41%? Uh, yeah, Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 41%. IMDb gave it a 5.5 5 out of 10. I don't know. What's the Rotten Tomatoes audience score? That's what I'm looking for. Oh, who, who, who is doing this? The audience score from Rotten Tomatoes for the Lizzie McGuire movie is a 49%. And the tomato meter is a 41%. Who, who are these people? Who, who voted in this? But uh, This is a celebration. Yes, this is, right, this is a little like Zoom party, a Zoom celebration for the 17th anniversary of the Lizzie McGuire movie. So on May 2nd, it turned 17, and we're here to celebrate. You guys also might already know this, but we've definitely mentioned it before. A dream of ours, and we're going to do this, is to go to Rome one day and kind of make like a Lizzie McGuire movie tour. But what we're going to do, yes. we uh, are just going to put up some pictures from this movie and just react. We're going we're gonna to take our trip. We're, gonna, we're going to go to Rome the only way we're able to do so now, which is virtually. And you know what? what whenever we go to Rome, the first thing we're going to do is get a Vespa. Oh, you, that's going to be us. That's going to be you. I'm going to be in the back like, Looking at all the paths following us. All, all of them. Oh, I, it's very hard. Grace and I really can't go anywhere. I'm um, trying to remember what song is playing in this scene. Isn't it Why Not? Is it Why Not? Yeah, I think it is. I and then, and right. then this is about then whenever the scene in the, one of the, okay, so yes, this movie had some, not problematic, but some scenes that what are clearly blown up out of proportion. Sure, like sure, sure. her back was to the bus whenever she's on the Vespa. Yeah. And they freaked out that Miss Ungermeyer was going to see a girl on a Vespa and just know it was Lizzie. And that blonde hair, that's obviously Lizzie. Now I know obviously we're going to go to Rome. Like that's where we're oh, going is oh to Rome. God. But before Lizzie got to Rome, she had a little, a little like concert in her room to one of the best songs of all time the, the tide, tide is high but i'm holding on 
I'm gonna be your number one. It's also where she rips her shower curtain down. And Matt has his uh, little camera filming her. What's, is this, where Isn't is this she? at the airport? It's at the airport, I thought, because it looks like she has like headphones on around her neck. Oh, that's at the airport, yeah. So yeah, so she has graduation, which you'll see. Then she goes to the airport because obviously the most natural thing for an eighth grade graduation is <laughs> to go to Rome with one chaperone for two weeks. Mm -hmm. That's definitely what I did in a, after I graduated eighth grade. Only eighth grade, yeah. yeah. I mean, my high school or my middle school, we went to a water park, but I get like Rome is the it's water like, park of it. Right. Right, 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 right. The Trevi Fountain, it is, well, there is water there. All right, so, so Lizzie did graduate. It was a little uh, nerve-wracking, though. She pulled down the whole curtain. There was a lot. Look, like, look at her face. This She's is, so nervous. This is how Lizzie felt her entire graduation. And also, also, a lot for an eighth grade graduation. Uh, we did not even have caps and gowns. We didn't have, we had, like, I think we had a thing where, like, parents could come, but everyone just kind of like watch you walk, I think. And then we all went to the water park. We didn't have like a full on cap and gown. No, I can't remember at all. No way did we have a cap and gown. No. And then was it Margaret Chen? Margaret didn't show up. So <laughs> Margaret, <laughs> she was not there. So Lizzie stepped in. What, did you, what was she sick? I forget. Yeah, she was sick. And then Lizzie had to <laughs> give the speech and she for some reason within 10 seconds of speaking decides she needs a glass of water well she also did that classic lizzie thing that that's just a classic hillary thing and then all hell broke loose she fell on her way to get the water uh, and then she ran to here mm -hmm. to, the airport, to go to rome with her class and she thinks it's going to be the best trip because no kate Little does she know. There is the cutest, oh, it's honestly just such a cute scene. So when her and Gordo, uh, uh, oh, oh, my headphones. When they are on the plane going to Rome, Lizzie falls asleep on Gordo. So precious. I mean, we all knew that they were had a thing. Oh, they had a, and look at Gordo's face. He's like, is this really happening? They sat with each other. And also, it looked like they were in a first-class seat. There was nobody around them. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, if you can afford to take your class to Rome for two weeks, you can probably afford first class. Fair enough. And then they get to Rome. They're having the best time. They get... Oh, the cheese. Is this the cheese That's wheel? the cheese. This is Miss Ungermeyer. This, this is the only picture I pulled of Miss Ungermeyer. Boy, oh boy, is Miss Ungermeyer. She's the one and only chaperone on this entire trip. Okay, but to be, okay, so this is what I'll say. Miss Ungermeyer doesn't seem to need, I mean, granted, she doesn't notice that Lizzie's missing. Every but day. she's like a tough woman. Like, she doesn't need, she doesn't need anybody. That's very true. So I feel like if there's anyone that's going to carry this thing, it's uh, solo, it's Miss Ungermeyer. That's, yeah, that's very true. But in this her. scene, this is like whenever she meets Paolo for the first time, right? Right, yeah. One of and the then, first times. And then yeah. people come up, fans, they bring... <laughs> Paolo Isabella! <laughs> they bring a giant block of cheese. If we had a dime. <laughs> and then after this is whenever the Vespa. I got ahead of myself. I just love a Vespa. You got... We, I, we, we didn't intend to go in story order. It just happened. <laughs> I love this picture of Miss Ungermeyer. <laughs> What was she saying? She was like... She was saying something about... So, something, something in Italian, right? Well, this was the whole, like, Rome, the Eternal City, wasn't it? Yeah. This was when she met the parents at the airport. Mm hmm And when she's like, hey, parents, shut your shut pie your holes. Shut your pie holes. <laughs> God, and I'm assuming that you've all seen it. If you're watching this video, you're probably just reliving it with us. Ugh. The friendship we never thought would happen. But truly that we never thought would happen. They don't even just become friends. Like they, they really go from zero to a hundred because Kate fully covers for her. It's yeah. It's really just goes to show that you can be friends with anybody. Your worst enemy. Anybody. 
I had a picture of them as well. Just her face, her little smile in that. I know. I think, I feel like was this when. Because this was after um, Lizzie's out on the Vespa the whole day. Then she comes back and then she's like, does the dryer to make her feel like a yes. fever. And Kate calls her out and was just like, your hair is done. You have a fresh manicure. You have your clothes on. You are not in this room. You're not sick. Then, of course, Lizzie and Gordo take a trip to the Trevi Fountain. And she's like, Gordo, I want to find adventure. Or whatever she says. <laughs> and she throws it. Is that what she said? It's like, promise me we'll find adventure. <sighs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And she promise throws me. it in, turns around, and there in front of her, Paolo. Sing to me, Paolo. She meets Paolo. This was before. I keep, I, I, I'm acting like the Vespa is the most important part of this movie. This was. Kind of is. This was BV. This was before Vespa. Or this was actually the Vespa day, the VD. That's the outfit she's wearing, yeah. yeah. I don't know about you, but I remember whenever they, you, the first time I saw the movie, I didn't know that it was Hillary playing Isabella. I don't, I'm trying to remember if I did. I don't, I Because, th- okay, 17 years. So we were 11 when this movie came out. Yes. And I remember thinking, thinking like, oh, wow, they found someone that looked just like <laughs> I don't remember if I did. I think I probably fell for it. Like, I totally thought in The Parent Trap that was Lindsay Lohan and someone else. Twice, yeah. Yeah. Right. Twice, yeah. There's also a, a very iconic scene from this movie <laughs> where <laughs> Lizzie literally becomes an, a complete celebrity, Isabella. Oh. And she goes, it's when they're, isn't it when they play, you better work, come on, yeah. girl, work it, girl. Oh my God, this that was outfit. wild. So, I'm again, we're assuming you've watched the movie, but if you haven't, basically we find out that there's a girl, Isabella, Isabella who looks just like Lizzie, who's a pop star, who sings with Paolo, and yes. she's gone to a different island. They need her to sing at this music awards show in Rome. So he decides to get Lizzie to play Isabella. Yes. And lip sync. So this is her being Isabella, trying on clothes for this award show. Boom. No, I'm really glad you did that because that is true. People could watch this and might have never seen it. Um, but yeah, so she, be, she tries on the igloo. She, this happens, this, what, this, this thing. <laughs> That needs a lot of people. Like, what are those? Like marshmallows? <laughs> oh my god, that's quite oh. an outfit. And she can she couldn't she like pull the thing and then it like shorten the dress. Oh yeah, yeah. She tr- and I don't were these dresses for her to wear at, yeah. in the performance. That's why. Yeah. Thank God she didn't go with any of them. But this is her at the performance. She gets up on stage. We find <gasps> out Paolo cannot sing anymore. Paolo's like a terrible singer. Like, let's uh, not beat around the book. Uh, These ladies bring down the house. Yeah, they do. We've got Lizzie. We got Isabella, which is Hillary Duff in a wig. <laughs> but it's Hillary Duff in a wig, song, singing voice by Haley Duff. Oh, oh my God, yeah. Let me see. Let me see if I can find one more. I know, I'm looking for one more as well. I bet we're looking oh, for the same one. I know it's hard to find. <laughs> I'm looking for a dream. Yep. <laughs> got it. You got it? I think. Let me see if it works. She's singing. Uh, I don't really know. <laughs> so, so she sings. <laughs> but then for some reason, part of Lizzie's actual singing voice isn't y- you Lizzie. Can- yeah. But obviously they set up a real set and this was all actually really, really, really actually filmed in the Coliseum. Yes. And if you ever question that, you can just go right to this part. Oh, there it is. That is it. Okay, so you'll know if she puts her arms out like this. Her arms go out. It's the part when they're like, this is what dreams. And then she goes, dreams. No. I'll show you. <laughs> yeah, David, please show us. Dreams. That's it. That is. Ex- that's literally what happens, and it's probably. I don't know any time that I've ever played that, or been around anyone and played that part that people don't do that. It's like, because it's not her voice, and then it's not. 
it's so obviously not her voice. <laughs> and then it is so, <laughs> it's wild. It's wild. But it's, it's, it's one of the best parts of the movie. Really, I'd say if there's anything you do after this, it's go to YouTube and look up this scene. David and I do have footage of, hi- of us dancing along with this scene in the movie. We did really, really well. We just don't really know how to share it because of copyright, which is so annoying. But happy, 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 happy 17th anniversary to this movie. Uh, I, I, one of the greatest movies ever made. That was very Lizzie of you. That's what I was going for. I'm glad you caught it. <laughs> but yeah. Happy 17th anniversary. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please yes. share it. Like, I don't know, send it to Hillary Duff herself. Do you know Hillary Duff? Tag Hillary. Subscribe below. Click like. Visit our website, bttbpodcast.com, and then share and follow us everywhere. Oh, but thank you guys so much for watching. We love you so much. Stay safe, stay healthy. Um, this is what dreams are made of. This is what y'all are what dreams are made of. Dreams. Dreams. And we will see you guys next week. Goodbye. Bye.